Hey everyone, this is the 8th video of automated security testing using JAP series and today we are going to discuss about script based authentication in JAP. And by end of this video, we will be able to know how we can scan an application which is implementing OAuth2 related uh, authorization. And for this demo, I was not able to find any local host application which is implementing the OAuth2. So we will be discussing the things on the conceptual level here. So we know that like for generating a bearer token, there will be a exposed endpoint which will be taking request parameters in form of client ID, client secret, tenant ID, grant type and then email ID and the password. Okay, and then we will be getting a response. The response will look something like this. It will have an access token and we will be extracting this token value and then we will see how we can send this token to every request whichever request will need some kind of authorization to access the resources for achieving this we will be needing two kind of scripts uh, one will be authentication script and the other one will be http center script so the authentication script will first generate the bearer token and it will generate the bearer token on basis of the logged out and logged in indicator that we will set up in the context. Okay, so whichever request will be coming in and there will be a logged out indicator for that particular request. In that case, a request will be sent to generate a bearer token. And then to send that particular bearer token in the header of every upcoming request, it will be the job of HTTP sender script. So these like some basic template of these scripts you can find in this particular GitHub repo under uh, community scripts. So if I go to this location, so here you will be able to find most of the templates which are there for like authentication scripts. Then there is HTTP sender script which we will be using and uh, like Selenium scripts are also there. Then session based scripts are also there. So just to stick to the context of this demo, let me go to the authentication script first. And most of these authentication scripts will follow a same kind of pattern in which you will find this particular method authenticate. So basically we have discussed about this particular method in our JSON based authentication video as well. But just to give us a uh, like high level overview of this particular uh, function. So this will be called every time uh, this JavaScript file will come into the picture and this JavaScript file will come into the picture on basis of the context that we have set. Okay, and within this particular function, you will be able to see a helper argument, a param value and the credentials. So talking about helper, uh, it is an inbuilt class which will provide some useful method to interact with the HTTP request and HTTP responses. Okay, and this param values it will enable this script to access the parameters which we will be um, setting up here right once we will select the script based authentication there will be few parameters which will come up here on basis of the script like once we will load the script the parameters which will be seen here and then we'll be sending the we'll be setting the values of those parameters and by using this param values we will be able to access those parameters within the script and this credentials it is used to access the user's credentials which we will be setting up in this section and if you go to the script section here you will find a script related to oauth2 and it is used to generate the refresh token so we are going to use this script as our base script and modify it uh, to generate the bearer token as per our requirement but the basic pattern will remain same for this particular script so if we go through this script what all things we are doing here. So this thing we know that this will be the first method which will be called upon. And after this, if you are seeing this param values and credentials, right? So first of all, you need to take this into the consideration. So whatever the parameters that you are going to use, those should be defined within this uh, method as a comma separated uh, values, right? So for example here, there are two values token endpoint and client ID. In our case, we will be having uh, all of these as our, like if you see here, 
So all of these five will be the param values in our case. So we need to define this all the attribute in this particular function. So once we are done with that, while uploading the script in authentication section of the context, we will be able to see these five attribute. And then we can set the value of these five attribute from that section. And those values, we are if we will be able to get those values by using this param values dot get and the attribute name. Similarly, whatever the credentials that we are going to use in our case, like email ID and password that we need to define in this particular method. So here in the comma separated form. So whatever we will be defining here that will be loaded into the user section within our default context users and once we click on add those values will be displayed here uh, for adding the user information okay so we'll see that in action but before that let us go through the remaining part of the script so here we can get all the param values and the credentials values and then after getting that we will be generating our uh, request body using the params and credentials that we have here so in form of query parameter whatever the query parameter that your endpoints uh, for generating the bearer token are going to use we are going to define a string in that format right so after this the next thing is to build the header so for this we have taken the uri and the http request as the post request and here we are setting up the request header and we are storing it in a variable we are passing the method request uri and the http reader dot as http 11 after it we will be using the helper like helper class here the helper class will be coming into the picture for very first time for preparing our http message so we are again storing the instance in uh, into a token message and then we are setting the request body from uh, here like whatever the query parameters that we have defined here so the final value we will be passing here and setting up the request body then we will be setting up the request header using this instance and again we are setting one more request header to set the content length here now the second use of the helper class is to send this particular http message and receiving the response so we are using this particular uh, function send and receive for achieving that and uh, here the main thing to notice is that once you are done calling this function the response will be stored in this instance only token message only so if you see here uh, while parsing the json to fetch the access token we are using instance of token message dot get response body okay so once we have received the access token out of our response then we are using this script where class which we have uh, defined here we are using this class to set the global variable this is our global variable uh, attribute name access token and then this is the uh, here we are taking the value from here okay and now let us see the final javascript uh, file that we are going to create for our bearer token generation so this is the file that i have created so we are going to use attribute as per our requirement like here i have parameters param values and credentials which i have defined in these two functions this is like the parameters which i am going to use and these are the credentials apart from that i have fetched value of all these attribute which we will be defining in context generated the request body as per our requirement and then building the header building the message uh, there is no change in this section yeah apart from that everything is same and similarly for credentials as we have email id and password so once we go to the user sections and here add a credential here you will be able to see the email id and password which you can define here right so that's how you can pass these parameters and apart from that if you see here within the authentication as we discussed in our previous demos uh, related to json based authentication and form based authentication so here we need to pass the regex uh, regex for defining the logged in and logged out indicator on basis of that only jap will identify like for which particular request authentication is required 
and again as we have done it in our previous video of json based authentication we can identify one single resource uh, one single endpoint uh, which like behave differently once you are logged in and behave differently once you are logged out so we can poll that particular endpoint uh, as per a poll frequency that we can define in seconds as well here okay so that particular endpoint will be polled after the every duration that we have configured here and see whether the uh, authentication is required or not okay and next thing is uh, we will be setting the forced user as per the user that we are going to define here and then session management here we need to select http authentication session management okay so for http sender script which we are going to discuss just after discussing this thing uh, for that http sender script we need to define our session management as this http authentication session management right and apart from that yeah other things we do not need to change so once you are done defining all of these things you can click on ok and what it is saying you have not configured a value for the required field api url so as of now i can define any value here but as we do not have any local host application this i am just sending some demo uh, some random value here some dummy values okay so now once i am done with this the next thing is that we need to discuss about http sender script for that i am going to come here again and under this here we have http sender and this is the very first script add bearer token and here we do not need to modify anything right and if you see here it is saying that this will add the new access token the generated access token that uh, we have set up as a global variable we are going to access that particular variable here and set a authorization header for every request which are going to come in and here it is saying that add authorization header to all request in scope except the authorization request itself so that we are checking using this condition okay and the method that we are using is sending request okay it will be used for every request um, for which authentication will be required or i can say for which authorization needs to be set up as the bearer token right if we move to the notes section here we can see all the things that we have covered in this demo so we created an authentication script to generate the bearer token and store the token into a global variable and then we use the http sender script to fetch that global variable and generate an authorization token for every incoming request after that we need to create a context with following condition we need to include the url application url into the context and then we need to define the authentication as script based authentication uh, load our script and define the required parameters and set up the login and logout indicator the next step is to create a user and define the credentials as in form of email and you uh, password after that we need to define session management as http authentication session management for our http sender script and after doing that we can export the context for our automation purpose we need to enable the http sender uh, using automation and then we need to run an automated spider using the created context so this is it for this video guys and i'll attach the notes and the source code of this particular demo into the description section and in case you are liking the content that i'm making please do like and subscribe see you in the next video thank you